Hey guys, today I'll be showing you another uh, project I've been working on and uh, this video is also for Nathan who owns this nice little realistic MG1. Um, so this video is different because I didn't necessarily do a restoration on this synth as much as I did modifications. Um, I did some really custom stuff to this little uh, MG1. But I've also brought in my personal MG1 which is not modified. The only thing it's got that's not factory is quarter inch outputs. And so you get to actually hear the comparison between the two as well. And just kind of hear how beefy this thing is now. I mean, this thing is, is killer. Um, so I'll just kind of go over here, guys. And also, for anybody that's interested, um, I will be releasing uh, notes on what I've done to this one. So if, if some of you guys are hobbyists and do it yourself and know how to do electronic stuff, uh, you'll be able to install these yourself or build these circuits. Um, if not, I'll be happy to install them for you. Um, but uh, anyways, we'll start with, with the uh, modifications I've done, and I'll just kind of go over and show you. So we'll start over here on the left-hand panel. Um, there's a lot more mods I could have done, uh, but I primarily focused on modulations and octaves. That was my big, big drive on, on this particular synth, because that's really where you get a lot of your sound textures, more so than adding crazy controls for different things. Um, so what I've done here is this first part I've added is actually an independent output for the polyphonic section. It has its own volume control and uh, that way you can mix the poly section externally from the mono synth which is a really kind of handy thing especially if you want to put effects on it. Uh, you can run effects out in between the, uh, the line out of your just your polyphonic section. Uh, at the same time though, I did keep it where when you bring this slider here up, it does still inject it into the filter and like it would have in the factory setting. Uh, so it's just it's actually kind of nice because you can bring this up as well as this and kind of get some phasing interaction because of the filter. Uh, with a filter sweep, you can actually do some really cool stuff, which I will show you. Um, the next thing I added was this toggle switch here, which actually allows you to drop the oscillator 1 frequency an octave. So when you select that down, it actually brings oscillator 1 down a whole octave. Um, what I did to oscillator 2 is I, as I modified the detune control where it goes a full plus and full negative uh, octave range. So that's really handy as well. I was trying to do things with the limited room I had in this chassis without making it just look like complete garbage. <laughs> that's really what I was trying to do here. So that's why you don't see a toggle for it and all this because I had these other ideas. Um, the next thing I added, you probably see this LED blinking. Well, I added a secondary LFO into this synth. So it's got it's got its own LFO here with its own speed control as well as a fine-tuned control for speed. So you can do some really, really nice things here. The fine-tuned control isn't as uh, isn't as active and low frequency as when you get to audio ranges with this LFO. This really allows you to do some really cool L-film synthesis effects, which I'll, I'll show you. So that's pretty much this side. On this side here, um, I added a, a mount control knob for modulation of your polyphonic section. So you can actually control the amount of modulation into your poly section. Um, and then what I added here, you see this, this pot here, which is uh, controlling between, it actually is a mixer between the original modulation source and the new modulation source. And by it being a mixer, I can actually mix the two signals together to get some really complex modulation effects. Um, at the same time, I've also uh, modified the board where the filter control also looks at this mix control. So you can have the oscillators modulating off the original, off the original LFO and have the filter modulating off this, uh, uh, this LFO or the factory LFO mixed between the two. So you can get some really cool stuff. Uh, and then the next toggle switch I added was actually a wave shape control for your LFO. Now this is just a generic LFO circuit. It's just a, a very generic uh, design. And it generates a triangular wave and a square wave. So that's what allows you to switch here. And uh, I will have all this dressed up a little bit better. I'm still waiting on parts and things to put the knobs on and you know all the good stuff there. But uh, that's what I've done as far as the... the main modifications. The other modifications I did was actually in the gain staging. And I didn't just cut the load resistors out like what's online because that just that's too noisy. It's too distortion. It just it don't sound worth the crap. And uh, so what I did is I went in and I selected values of resistors 
uh, to give you a good gain response but without the over distortion or over driving factor uh, that you have without the resistor in there at all. Um, and I forget what exactly the resistor uh, reference designator is, but uh, I modified it in two places. One, you've actually got two load resistors. You've got one for your, your actual uh, master volume output, which is a low volume, which feeds into a, uh, an amplifier, and it has another load resistor on the output, which I changed those resistors as well. And I also eliminated the resistors because of the, uh, the new quarter inch jacks. It's actually on that little board that has the RCA jacks. So in that process, I re uh, I got some values I like the distortion of, and I like the volume amount in the gain stage. So I've got this thing where it really sounds like it should. It sounds like a Moog. Um, and that was really that's really the mods I did. And I will walk around back. You probably see a Moog Refogger CP251 sitting over here for a reason. I went on and added uh, some jacks here, which is going to make this thing even more flexible. So what I've added is this is your poly output, just your, your audio. This is your main audio out. And then I've added uh, three jacks here. One is your LFO in for your filter. And the other one is LFO in for your pitch, which this pitch here controls the monophonic oscillators. So when you plug into here, it actually bypasses this LFO and feeds a signal directly into this slider here where you can control the amounts, but you can use the external source, which is kind of a nice feature. Um, I've also added an LFO out, uh, so you can actually send the original LFOs here, or the original LFO as well as the new LFO out, and you can use the mixer knob to control which one you want, and it sends it out this jack here. And it's all buffered, added buffer circuits, so there's no current drop when you start loading this thing down with modular equipment, uh, which was a big thing, and most people don't look at that. And so you'll start plugging stuff in, and you'll start hearing this this decrease in, in your wave responses and stuff like that. Um, so that was my focal point. Um, but that's that's really it. Uh, that's what I've done to this one. <laughs> it, it sounds like like not much, but there's a lot going on inside. Uh, which I will open this thing up just kind of show you how this looks. Um, I'm still not exactly done. Like I say, I'm waiting on parts. Uh, I've still got a few parts waiting to come in. Uh, but I can open this thing up and show you the inside here. You can kind of see my modifications. So here's the board I added. Right here it has the LFO, uh, the octa shift circuitry, um, uh, all the harness. I've actually designed a harness, laid it out so it's it's serviceable. I uh, will have schematics on this, so in the future if there is a problem and I'm not around to work on it, it can be serviced. I'll have the notes inside the chassis. Um, but you can kind of see how I've got all this wired up. This is uh, all the wiring harness for your controls over here. And this is probably the only spot that gets a little messy because I, this was kind of a second thought um, on the polyphonic output. Um, just something I added that I thought would be a, a nice plus. But uh, still waiting on two capacitors here to replace. Those will be new caps. But I uh, didn't have them in stock. But uh, anyways, that's the inside of it. And you can just kind of see it's going to be fully serviceable. You can pull this board out and uh, it's, it's, it's serviceable. So anyways, that's the look at the inside. I try to keep things as clean as I can because, believe me, I get some things in here that's modified. And this one actually had been modified before I got it. And it was just a, just a mess. But uh, let me put the camera on the tripod here and I'll walk you through the sounds here. And I'll also put this thing back together because <laughs> I can't do it one-handed. So let me get this thing re reseated here. There we go. So anyways, as you can hear, I'm just going to show you how this thing sounds. It's got a really, really rich power. grit to it now and I don't have very much volume on this either you could turn it up a little bit more and get even more uh, more volume out of this thing um, so that's that's the actual tone of the synth I'll show you the octave shift we'll go to oscillator 2 uh, or, I'm sorry oscillator 1 I'll show you the octave shift here so you bring out the switch down now this oscillator uh, 1 is now a whole octave lower we bring up oscillator 2 it's still an octave high, so now you can use your detune control. Detune them 
just a hair. different ball game of, of what you can do with the sounds and all of this. And I will show you the response of oscillator uh, 2 on this one, just to show you the range response. So this one here, if we, if we just go here, if I bring this uh, this uh, detune down, you'll hear it, it never goes a full plus a negative octave. <laughs> really of, of uh, the realistic and then the road got even worse because you didn't have two controls for the oscillators um, but uh, we'll set this back up right quick <laughs> Oscillators. And then we got the polyphonic section, which I'll show you this modulation here. So we'll start with the modulation here. We'll just play it. So here's your polyphonic section. And that's actually sent through the filter. really deep with it. So that's your uh, your modulation of your polyphonic section. No wave shaping, it's just a simple square wave. It would take a lot more work to get a, a waveform um, because it actually doesn't even have a keyer circuit. It, it's just a uh, note on off. That's what it is. But when we bring the amount control, we can actually uh, pan between the two uh, os uh, LFOs. So modulation to the uh, polyphonic section we'll just use the uh, the new LFO <laughs> so now you get all these complex kind of waveforms <laughs> sweep off this new LFO so we get something like this. section to be swept by the filter. So you can kind of hear how that works. Uh, we also can get into FM synthesis by uh, we'll just 
not focus on the poly section here. So we'll go So we'll put the key tracking on the filter. this extra LFO and since you can combine them you can kind of hear how this works you can get all these uh, variations uh, but what we can do if you want the the filter to have the original response all you gotta do is turn the mix knob all the way to this LFO Mixing the two LFOs together. It's really, really flexible now with some of the tones you can get out of this thing. And you still have your contour generator as well. I didn't do any modifications to your, your contour. So what we'll do is we'll bring this all down. We'll put this into contoured mode. We got that octave down. Uh, down an octave. And you get that really thumpy bass out of this thing now. And when you look at this one, it will not do that. So we'll go ahead and close the filter up. Of course, I got control problems with, with my personal one. I actually don't think it's even going to work. But the filter, yeah, the filter, this, this control is messed up on mine. I forgot about that. Um, I hadn't even serviced mine yet. Uh, everybody else comes first. But uh, anyways, not as thumpy. And of course, you can tell just by the sound, it's not going to be as thumpy. filter you can just hear the difference even in the tone uh, which was really my focal point I want to make sure this thing sounded good and I want to make sure it could do some really crazy modulation stuff um, so now what we do, we get to the, the Mografoger stuff, because now you can cross-patch things. Uh, one example I will show you here, let me get my patch cable. So one trick I did add, which is this kind of little trick that you have to kind of know, is if you plug into the LFO output and then plug into the uh, LFO in for pitch, you can actually direct uh, the new LFO into your pitch control. Actually, mix the two signals. And you can 
still control the amount because I got it set up where it's still feeding into the, uh, the slider control. So that's an example of feeding through the mix into the uh, tone source control of your modulation. And that's just using just a patch cable from LFO out to uh, LFO in pitch. Um, you don't have to do that for the filter because the filter is already routed to all this. So that's just a trick I added. Just, just to kind of save some room on, on uh, switches and stuff here. Um, so now what we'll do, we'll take the LFO, uh, I mean the, uh, the Mografoger, the CP251, and we'll just take a, a triangular wave out, output, and what we can do, we can plug that into the, uh, we'll plug that into the filter control, and now what we've got Now it's using the LFO of the Mografoger. What's also cool about it is since it's got an LFO output, you can take the LFO out and plug it into the pedal input of your uh, CP251 and control the rate <laughs> of your actual... Uh We'll do it this way. We'll go. the two together. You can do some really wild things with this. Um, but uh, I mean, that's just some of the patching stuff. You could use a sequencer. I played with sequencers with this thing uh, where I fed a sequencer actually into the tone source control mount of the modulation source and use this as a controller, which I have videos on my Instagram for anybody that's interested in more detail about some of the characteristics you can get out of this thing. Um, you can get a lot of uh, LFM synthesis. We'll set this thing up right quick to an LFM synthesis pattern. This thing self triggered. Oh, oh, oh. 
and again it's really crazy you can do some really crazy stuff with this thing now but uh, anyways I just want to make a video here Nathan just kind of give you a good overview here uh, hopefully the parts will be in the parts are supposed to be in tomorrow and I'll be able to really finish this thing up for you um, but uh, it's a crazy little synth I'm really happy with it it's it's a lot of fun especially when you start doing patching between other things and uh, just, just having the modulation, this extra LFO makes a huge difference in the flexibility of this thing. It's really great. Uh, but for those interested, I will post the links to my Instagram videos that I've posted this thing. I have quite a few of them uh, through the, the weeks I was building this. Um, so anybody interested, look in the link below or in my description below and, and you'll see the links to the uh, Instagram videos. Um, but as always guys, thanks for watching. Nathan, really appreciate you letting me modify this thing. Trust me enough to modify it for you. Uh, it's been a real treat because I've done some things that uh, I've always kind of wanted to play with with one of these and just never have had time for my personal stuff. And uh, But I uh, really got to test this stuff out and uh, see how it works. But uh, anyways, guys, take care. And I hope all of you have a, a good holiday coming up. Take care.